Hey, how's it going? I hope you're having a great day. So I was chipping out an ECU. It's this is a P28, and uh, you know I was almost done with it. And I got you know I I should make a few pointers on this for people who are interested in electronics and stuff. Um, this would just apply to a lot of different things. But um, so I'll show you some of the components I'm working on here. So I already added this resistor here, this capacitor here, this capacitor there, and then uh, I think that was a 28 pin socket there. Um, first thing if you're going to do something like this uh, you want to have a, try to get some quality equipment like this is a, got a, a welder. Once you use one of these uh, I'm going to turn this off actually. One of these uh, temperature controlled um, soldering irons uh, you probably won't go back to those like old style Radio Shack ones because you can dial in the temperature to what you want and the reason why that was flickering is like a, if I turn it on now um, it's solid that tells me it's not ready to go when it starts flickering it's ready to go so you, that's nice too you can tell when your temperature's up to uh, ready to go anyhow um, I want to show you kind of what some good solder joints look like let's see it's kind of hard flipping it over and so let's see here and to look okay so this one here is probably not coming up on camera here so I did this here and this here and hopefully that's coming out I might have to get a pod and see how that goes um, anyways you should have the the solder the way you do it and a lot of people do this wrong is you take the pencil and you actually put it on the seat here's the what I call a seat here here's the one that hasn't been touched yet those are the seats you put the soldering on the seat and you actually touch one of the pins with the tip of the soldering iron and then you don't um, you let it heat up and then when you bring the solder to it um, it should draw into the two materials that you're touching with the soldering iron anyways that's how you get a nice uh, seat like I got there that one there and the real tr trick is when you flip it over, let's see if we can find that here. So like this one here I did, it came out really nice on this side, and I'll try to zoom in for you. If you look at the base of that, it's got a little rosin on it, but it flowed in all the way up the... Um, to this to this side and that's what I just wanted to show you there so and another good example is you could look at the professional components how they do so what I'm saying is when you play the solder to the other side it actually should wick up a little bit into the component on this side and that's how you know you get a pretty good solder joint um, again what I see a lot of people on the internet doing is they kind of like throw the solder on the tip of the iron, iron and then kind of like take the blob of solder from the iron and put it onto the components which uh, you know it's real tempting to do and it kind of works but it doesn't get you that nice wicking that you want to get sometimes it does but and sometimes you have to do that but uh, you should try to avoid it you should really try to touch both components with the the base oops the base like here's a good example let's say this is a hole here you touch this my fingers a soldering iron you touch the soldering iron here and then like let's say this is your component coming up here you want your soldering iron to touch the the base and the component and it should be heating up those two and then you'd actually touch the soldering iron on the, uh, the solder on the base and it would wick into the everything and the rosin from the solder helps it flow anyways uh, so here's another thing I'm gonna need two hands for this so I put on these components and before you get too carried along when you're putting components on the circuit board you should actually uh, while you still have room test it and I'll show you some examples of how I test these like I, I just got done testing all the pins on this here um, and actually this component and this component also and I'll show you how I test that to make sure I get good solder connections so I'll be right back okay this is going to be kind of tricky to do the camera angles on this but um, this video also is not really a, this is not meant to teach people how to solder or anything this is more of a tips for maybe somebody's experienced and, and you know know how to do this and you're just looking for some tips to improve your skill level so 
Um, here's my meter and I got it set to continuity and I'll just turn it on and then so when and I got an audible so when I touch have a short basically I can hear a tone and so a really good idea what I'm trying to mostly explain here is I'll zoom in here and I'll just do a couple of pins on that 28 pin connector this guy right here in fact I'll just do one now you can do this several ways. You could like flip over the the motherboard and see where the traces go. Um, but if you kind of know a little bit about electronics, you kind of understand where stuff goes, anyways. So this chip is meant to override this chip. So I know that these pins are probably going to the legs of this CPU or, or this memory module, whatever it is. And um, also, this is a buffer, and it gets put in place to go to here. So I know. But these pins will go either to this buffer or to this chip here. So I'll just do one and I'll find it real quick and show you what I do. So let's say I want to see if this pin's a good solder joint. I just put it in there and I, I'll just slide it across here. Sound like it was right there. So if you hear like, like a quick beep and it stops, it's probably going through a capacitor. So there. So kind of find what pin it is and so you just go through all the 28 pins it takes a long time and you just find spots where it traces out and again it would take a long time to visually look so you just kind of know where they go like I just I did this one so almost every one of the pins I think on this side pretty much went to this CPU here's another one so this is a capacitor here um, you might be going well where can I find that I soldered this in well, if it's a capacitor and it was being put in here, it's most likely a capacitor to to buffer for this buffer here. This is a buffer for this chip. Um, so knowing that, it's probably the first pin on here, and there it is. And probably that just bridges right across to the other pin on the other side, and it does. And uh, so that tells me that that capacitor is soldered in there well. Also, again, I if I would have crossed it, um, the capacitor actually might have charged up a little bit and kind of interfered with the um, with the continuity, and you would have heard it kind of uh, make a squelching sound or something. Anyway, so it's just uh, I just advise you to do that when you're working on electronics and and make modifications and stuff like that, so that you don't get all done and then you don't know if the you know if you did a good job or not this way at least and I don't like this ECU this computer I don't know if this is any good because uh, I don't one of these days I want to build a, a, a tester for one of these but I don't have any way short of putting it in a car and see if you get a check engine light but at least I'll know that all the work that I did um, it was done properly and so if there is a failure it's most likely some other uh, problem on the motherboard that I just wasn't aware of Anyway, so that's about it. Um, I don't know if you have any questions about chipping out and stuff. Again, this is not a tutorial on how to chip out an ECU. I was just showing you some pointers on uh, if you're doing electronics like like this. Um, it's a good idea to check your components and stuff. And I thought that would help you. And also, I wanted to show how the wicking of the solder should make a nice seat on the one side and travel up to the base of the component and actually look like it hugs the base of the component. Probably didn't get a good video shot of that, but hopefully the point gets across. Anyways, uh, well, thank you for watching. I hope this video helps somebody out out there. Thank you for watching.